Climate change is already affecting our world. And if we don't act urgently and responsibly, then it will affect the lives of our children and grandchildren. In September 2015, the UN Assembly passed 17 development goals. Goals 12 and 13 address the sustainable consumption of resources and activities to combat climate change. With this new development agenda for the world, it's relevant that the medical profession also looks at how we use resources and how we can reduce our own carbon footprint. The healthcare sector is responsible for 8% of the US's total greenhouse gas emissions, and the National Health Services is responsible for about 3.5% of the United Kingdom's total greenhouse gas emissions. If we want to make a change somewhere, the operating room is actually a pretty good place to start as it typically represents the largest source of spending and waste generation in a hospital. A carbon footprint of cataract surgeries in the United Kingdom suggests that the procurement of supplies, which are largely single-use and disposable, represents the largest portion of the greenhouse gases for a phago emulsification. We assessed the greenhouse gas emissions from a surgical model which is both effective and efficient. Our even eye care system in the South Indian state of Tamil Nadu has created a high volume surgical model which reuses nearly all of their surgical materials. Previous studies have found that our even surgical outcomes are actually better than the UK's in a variety of metrics. Our study analyzes the carbon footprint of their high volume approach to phago emulsification. Aravin, when it started, had its mission of eliminating needless blindness and for it to achieve it, the high volume approach was a necessity and not an option. Through outreach and vision centers, Aravind admits and does about 100,000 cataract surgeries each year. Additionally, about 100,000 come directly to the paying section and 50,000 to the subsidized section of the hospital, taking the total to 250,000 cataract surgeries being done annually. This requires Aravind to perform 750 to 1500 surgeries each day. This is achieved through detailed daily micro planning to ensure adequate staffing, supplies and equipment, including sterile surgical instruments. Each surgeon operates on two tables supported by two scrub nurses and a circulating nurse, thus minimizing the weight for patients or equipment. Such high volume is enabled when quality is integral to it. At Aravind, quality systems are built on the foundation of standardized protocols, good medical records, and more importantly, an organizational DNA that fosters a culture of continuous improvement. We tracked the greenhouse gas emissions from a single phaco emulsification using a tool called Life Cycle Assessment, or LCA. LCA is regulated by the International Organization for Standardization, ISO 14040, and it quantifies the emissions of a product or process throughout that product's life cycle. So from raw material extraction, through the production phase, the use phase, and into the end of life or disposal. Using LCA, we cataloged all the materials and energy needed for each surgery, matched them to databases which estimate life cycle emissions, and then summarized them into a common unit of carbon dioxide equivalents. At the end of life phase for single-use disposable items like patient face drapes, gauze, and needles, these materials are either recycled, landfilled, or incinerated. The LCA for these items was straightforward since the entire carbon dioxide cost is associated with a single surgery. For reusable items such as gowns, masks, surgical tools, and stainless steel equipment, a fractional carbon dioxide cost for production and disposal of these items was allocated to each surgery based on the lifespan of each item. Between cases, Aravind sterilizes their surgical equipment, syringes, and phaco emulsification tools in a 30-minute autoclave cycle. At the end of the day, these items are ultrasonically sterilized and autoclaved in a full one-hour cycle. The staff's reusable linens and patient blankets are laundered and dried in-house at the end of the day. The carbon dioxide cost of sterilization for all of these materials is applied then to a single surgery. Even the gloves at Aravind are reused. Between cases, surgeons and assistants use an antiseptic rub to sterilize their gloves. They are thrown into the waste bins for incineration after being used in about 10 cases. 
Arvin only generates about a quarter kilogram of waste per patient. Two thirds of this is recycled, with 17% going to the local biowaste incinerator and 18% heading to the landfill. Auditing this waste shows that 20% was from the patient face drape and a full quarter was from the packaging and directions included with the interocular lens. The total life cycle greenhouse gas emissions for a single fake emulsification at Arvind are about 15 kilograms of CO2 equivalents. This is like driving a car 35 miles or 57 kilometers. The largest portion of impacts came from electricity use, resulting in about 12 and a half kilograms of carbon dioxide equivalent emissions. This is likely an overestimate as the operating rooms and the central sterile services were not sub-metered. The footprint from Arvin's materials use is minimal. Production, disposal, and use of all materials results in just 0.8 kilograms of carbon dioxide equivalents, and the recycling saves an additional quarter kilogram. Compared to the 2013 study of phaco emulsification in the UK, Arvin's carbon footprint for material production and disposal is just 1% of the UK's. The cost of Arvin's surgical supplies is only 11 US dollars per case, and they charge just 200 US dollars per phaco emulsification, with outcomes that rival the United Kingdom's. Now, there are many factors that go into the cost of surgery, but you can see that efficiency carries through this whole system. We are very proud of what we have accomplished in providing quality care with lower cost for our patients. We are continuing our journey to increase efficiency and reduce carbon emissions with a variety of sustainability initiatives. Arvind is currently working with our IOL manufacturer, Aurolab, to find ways to reduce packaging on the lenses. All our hospitals are installing solar panels and we are currently in the process of adding 100 more vision centers by the year 2025 to increase access to care and minimize patient travel. In all our outreach, we transport the patients as a group and for follow-up, we send our team to the community. By this, our patients coming back to the hospital is reduced. All of this is done to minimize the overall travel effort, cost and the carbon footprint they generate.